Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, coming to you from Ridgeway, Colorado, without any teeth. I had a tooth extracted and it's still too sore to put my dentures in, so I hope you can understand me okay. Uh, today's question comes from um, Alan Gartner, AE2V, that's Alpha Echo 2 Victor, so an amateur extra class. He says, I'm currently using an NFED long wire on HF, which works fine. While not a fancy antenna, I've made contacts ranging from Hawaii to Croatia and Argentina. I have no complaints. I have HOA restrictions, so a tower and a beam is out of the question. I have heard that a vertical is needed for good DX due to their low angle of radiation. Uh, that's often a good idea, yes. But I live in the East Tennessee Valley in the Knoxville area, which is surrounded by mountains and a plateau. It's a very deep hole. I'm afraid I would just be blasting RF into dirt and rock if I had a vertical. I hate to waste time and money on a vertical and not really get any improvement out of it. Do you have any insight about how well a vertical may work for me in this hole? Uh, before we jump in and talk about... Uh, uh, Alan's problem, I'd like to pay a special thank you to brand new patron Larry Reel, uh, who has just become a patron of this channel. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Let's jump in and see what we can do here. Okay, first of all, uh, if you're going to do anything that's DX, it doesn't matter how you transmit vertical or horizontal polarization. It'll end up circular polarization by the time it gets to the uh, DX recipient after it bounces off the ionosphere. Now, uh, your long wire is obviously doing a good job for you, uh, but that, that you have that same problem. Now, a, uh, if we look over here at the whiteboard, you've got a wire like this, okay, and the way it, if you look at just end on at the wire, okay, you've got a lobe up like this and a lobe up like this, and it's going in this direction like this. Now what happens when RF encounters a slope? Well, depending on the frequency, you get a little bit of bending of the waves, this is refraction up here, okay? And you're going to have that whether you've got a dipole or you have a uh, vertical. Now, if you have a vertical like this, your direction somewhere on the order of seven degrees. Um, you know, if it's a full-size vertical and you've got nice ground plane and so on. And what I want you to take a look at is see how deep a hole you are really in. Stand on your roof, okay, where you can see the mountains around you. Okay, so stand on your roof, and there are mountains over here. Stand on your roof, and ideally, you would do this with a theodolite, but you're going to estimate, uh, you can take a level up there that's level, and then measure the angle to these mountains. Now, even though it may seem you're in a deep hole, like I am, I looked around, and the maximum degree elevation for the mountains was three degrees. Just three degrees. And that's all. And so a vertical at my location gets out just fine. And I suspect it will do the same for you. So now if you're in some place like Uray, Colorado, where truly the mountains are like this, then yeah, a vertical wouldn't do a good job. But if you're in a big city, you will probably be fine. And you'll be quite surprised to discover that the uh, P 
peaks are not that high. Another way you can do this is you get a um, topographic map and look around you for the highest peak. And then find that on the topo map. Get the elevation here, the elevation here. Look at the elevation difference. Look at the distance. And you can compute this angle right here. And I think you will find it is a lot lower than you think it is. Okay. And then you'll be able to to do that. Let, let's just take a look at Chattanooga, Tennessee on Google Maps. Okay, you're in one of these uh, striations uh, where you've got all these valleys going this way right here. Okay, now your distance, you're somewhere in here in Knoxville. Okay, up here and over here, you're going to find your nearest uh, let's just do a distance, measure distance, um, hey, that's the highest peak right there. You are at 16.5 miles, or 16.91 miles. Okay, now if this is 3,000 feet above you, that's less than a mile. Okay, I don't think there's any mile high peaks around here. And you're going to find that the elevation here is uh, quite low. Okay, so I uh, assume you can do the trig. Um, if not, let's just take a quick look at the trig. We'll do it with tangents. This is 17 miles. This is, uh, say it's 3,000 feet higher than you. 3,000 feet in miles. We'll take 3,000, this is the difference in ele uh, elevation. So we're going to take 3,000 feet and divide it by 5,280. And so you are 0 0.56, which is 0 0.56, or 0 0.57, or let's just say 0 0.6. 0 0.6 right here, miles. Okay, now this is the rise, this is the run. We take the rise over the run, 0 0.6, divided by 17. And this equals the tangent of this angle right here, which we'll call theta. Okay, so tan theta. So what you do is you take 0 0.6, divide it by 17. Okay, that's the tangent of the angle. So we're going to do the inverse tangent, which is right there. We do second inverse tangent, and that's in degrees, and this is two, count them, two degrees. So a vertical at your location here, which has about a six or seven degree angle, is handily going to go over the top of those mountains. So check that out. So check that out, it's amazing. Um, we humans are not really designed to see vertically. We're designed to see horizontally because we work horizontally to find our prey, okay? We don't tend to notice things above us and we don't have a good idea of how high things are uh, from here. So I have looked at all of the mountains around here and none of them are more than about three degrees above where we are. Mount Sneffels is 15 miles that way. It is fully 7,000 feet higher than we are, and I have no problem getting over it with the antenna. So even though we live in a very mountainous area. So that's something to take a look at. So there you have it. If you have watched this far in the video, you might want to uh, see more of my videos, so be sure to uh, subscribe and click the bell. Also, uh, take a look at decastlercom slash support for ways you can support this channel. And until we next meet, 73.